Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and to my very first mukbang video. I am so excited to film this today. Never thought I would film one of these. I, I don't know, but I've fallen down the rabbit hole. I blame Cheap Lazy Vegan. She was my first mukbang video that I watched and I figured I love food. I love to eat food. I love to talk and talk about food. So why not give this a try? So. For my inaugural video, I was racking my brain trying to figure out what I wanted to eat and I thought I would try something new, which, you know, could be good, could be bad, but Rose over at Cheap Lazy Vegan makes a kimchi stew. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Korean. I don't want to butcher it at all, so yeah. I watched her make the kimchi, make kimchi stew a couple different times and I thought why not let's just try this I love kimchi and I love tofu and I love mushrooms and that's all that she, that she puts all that in there so I figured we'll give it a try let's get to the kimchi and the lid is really heavy and there's a lot of steam but it looks really good and it smells really good um, to drink I have a seltzer water it's Kroger brand um, cranberry lime I love flavored seltzer water I love the little bubbles when it gets your nose okay I don't know if I'll eat these um, today but I do have some snow peas that I picked up at Sprouts I'm gonna dish up and taste this I've only had one little sip of the broth just to make sure I got the flavor balance good and it tasted really good and I'm really hungry so here we go it's totally um, Rose's recipe so I will link her video down below but and she shows you exactly how to make it I only had Japanese kimchi so it's not authentically Korean because uh, all the Korean kimchi that I had got eaten so but I do want to try making her kimchi recipe because I love kimchi and yeah it smells really really good I would have a bunch of other different mushrooms in here. I have a lot of Asian um, like grocery stores in my area and we're actually, they've started talking about creating like an Asian district because they're all in the same area. Finally, get an Asian district. Um, but I, I have been working a lot of hours this week and I just didn't have the energy to go down there and get like enoki mushrooms or anything like that. So I'm going to sip the broth. That is really good. Yeah. It's spicy. It's sour. And it hits somehow, even though there's nothing inherently sweet in here, maybe it's the onion, it hits all the flavor profiles. It's spicy, it's sour, it reads a little sweet, um, not like sweet and sour, but you know, a little sweet. And yeah, it is so good. Mm -hmm. And tofu. I love tofu. I'm gonna have to make this for my kids. They would love it. Maybe not so much the mushrooms, I might have to find some other um, veggies to put in here because a couple of my kids don't like mushrooms, but this is a shiitake mushroom. I had to get dried shiitake mushrooms, which was really sad because they're just not the same. That is so good. Mm. <laughs> is quiet for the first time in a very long time it seems like so why am I doing it um so I have long had a interesting relationship with food um I was I've been a dancer my entire life I haven't danced 
and probably, well, my, my toddler, my youngest is three, so I was never pressured to stay a certain size because you're little, you know, and things. But I was pretty naturally slim as a kid, um, but yeah, I was pretty natural thin, naturally thin as a kid. But you know, you see, I was a ballet dancer, and you see what ballet dancers look like. And I always wanted to be a model, um, a runway model. So there was a standard to that. Of course, what I wanted to be, the models I was looking up to was like Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer and Tyra Banks and when they were Victoria's Secret Angels and they were, Victoria's Secret Angels used to be curvier than they are now. I may be wrong, but they used to have more curves than they do now. And I wanted to be a Victoria's Secret Angel. Um, but yeah, I wanted to model for as long as I could remember. And there's a certain, you know, size aesthetic that goes along with that. So I was, for as long as I can remember, I was concerned about my weight. Not that I needed to be, but I was, you know, comparing myself to um, the women in the magazines, and which is, I think, the unfortunately the normal part of growing up, especially in America, for a, a girl. so good um but yeah it was just always a thing and um I did end up doing some modeling when I was 16 I told my parent my mom all I really wanted all I wanted was to take classes there was a, a reputable school um connected with a large New York agency in our area and I said I just want to take the classes and I want to be a model so I would not recommend going to a modeling school I don't know of any reputable modeling schools anymore we're talking 20 years ago so I went to the modeling classes and I did really well I got really good marks um, Lot of good feedback. Got through all the classes, course passed with flying colors, and then went to meet with the agent for the local branch of the agency. And um, she raved over my pictures and you know talked about my goals and like I really want to be a runway model. And at the time, so I am just shy of 5'9. And at the time, that was like perfect. 5'8 um, to 5'11 was you know, maybe 6 foot, but if you were at 6 foot you were a little tall, but like 5'8 to 5'11 was a good height. And now it started, it's like 5'9 to 6'1 or 6 foot, which is, you know, just what it is. It's um, fashion aesthetics change with the times and that's where it's at now. Um, and she's like, you are perfect. I want to send you to talk to the agents from New York. They're going to be here. In a couple months the only thing is I need you to drop a couple dress sizes now I wasn't heavy at all I think I wore a size 10 at the time or 9 in juniors um, and she's like I just need you to drop a couple dress sizes Like, okay so I did um, I don't remember being like starving myself but I definitely ate smaller portions um, so I did and I, I actually never ended up going and talking to the agents um, I just something with the appointment um, and it was totally on my end not the agency's end um, so anyway, fast forward a few years, I've had a few kids, and I've just always struggled with my 
image and my relationship to food and the whole idea that you know some foods are good and some foods are bad and you know you're, you're being bad if you eat the chocolate cake but you're being good if you eat the salad with no dressing and and the whole low-fat diet culture was what I grew up on as a kid in the 80s so you know um but yeah so I'm do I've over the years I've gone back and forth with things and I want to really get to the root of my issues with food and my mom actually just called me so I may have less time than I thought. Anyway, so I want to get to the bottom of my food, my issues with food. And that food isn't bad and you're not bad for what you eat. Um, you just eat. And so I've tried to do a bunch of different things and right now I just want to eat and I don't want to worry about my weight. Now I do have some health considerations so I can't just blanket eat whatever I want and you know stop at fast food three times a week. Nobody should do that. Well, okay. I'm not gonna shit on your life. Um, I know for me and my body, that would make me incredibly sick. So, because I do have an autoimmune condition and I need to be a little more careful about what I eat. Um, so focusing on the things that I know make me feel good. And that is a lot of veggies. Not a lot of fruit. Occasional like apple or you know berries or something like that. Um, legumes, I love beans. Um, of all kinds. And then the occasional, I don't even call it, I'm trying not to be negative, but the occasional I don't even know what to call it. I don't want to call it a cheat meal because that's not right. That doesn't feel like that doesn't feel right to me. The occasional splurge, maybe, um, of something that is not nutritionally optimal for my body. I don't know. I'm not to play with this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know. If you know how to talk about this, let me know. Like, leave me some help because <laughs> I don't know how to talk about this without, you know, things are good, things are bad kind of thing. Um, something that's really good about talking about this kind of thing is Abby Sharp from Abby's Kitchen. She is a registered dietitian, which I am not, by the way. I just have done a lot of food research and nutrition research and a lot over the years. I have gone to school for holistic health care, um, so a natural healing, but it's not in nutrition. So, But she is really good one to watch. And she does reviews different um, eating channels, like what I eat in a day videos and stuff. And has a very blunt and honest review. But it's not negative. So I will also link her down below. And as I thought, the go-to garden is getting my nose. It never fails. I eat. It never fails. I eat anything like spicy or hot, like temperature hot, and my nose runs. So, I don't know. It's one of those things. Mm. I'm definitely going to take this to work because I don't, I would have to work tonight. And I don't have time to eat more right now, but I even bet I'm taking a big bowl of this to work tonight, so. Well, it's one thing I have my mom call me and says she's on her way of leaving her house. So it takes her about twenty minutes to get here. Fifteen minutes if the traffic's not if the traffic is good. But 
that I'm on a pedestal spool. So it's so yummy. So, a little bit about me. I have four kids. I'm a single mom. Um, been divorced for about almost five years now, four, four and a half years. No, five and a half years. Um, I have three kids from that relationship, from that marriage, and they are all um, teenagers. So my oldest is 17, he'll be 18 in a couple months. He's a senior in high school, so there's that. I have two girls, 15 and 13. Born on the same day, two years apart. Couldn't have planned that if I tried. Um, so that gives me a freshman, a high school freshman. And a um, junior higher. And then I had another relationship after my marriage ended. And I have a three year old. Three and a half. Um, so, yeah, things are busy. I think we'll eat one and then I'm going to get my ice cream. Mm, so good. These are so sweet, you almost don't need ice cream. But we're gonna have ice cream. I found this at Sprouts. It is called Hakuna Banana. It's a banana based frozen, banana based non dairy frozen dessert. I love bananas. <laughs> like, I love bananas. Um, it's the one fruit I do love. I love banana, especially banana flavored ice cream. Love banana flavored ice cream. So I thought I'd give this a try. This is um, the Choco Choco Chip. And oh, it is chocolate. There's ice crystals on top. It is chocolate. It is made with bananas and coconut milk, dates, dark chocolate, cocoa powder, cacao butter, coffee. Oh, so it looks like all the sweetener comes from the dates and the bananas. See, it's hard to find an ice cream that doesn't have sugar in it of some sort. Oh my goodness. Okay, I need a moment. That is really, really good. I think I have my new favorite ice cream. I it's non-GMO product verified. I totally missed the no added sugar part. Based in Los Angeles. Okay. Don't be surprised if you see this guy. And I work as part-time as a receptionist for a local hair salon chain. Um, currently, this week, there's three receptionists at the salon. And we all kind of cover each other's shifts if someone needs something, you know, time off for something or whatever. And this week, um, one of our receptionists had a family emergency with her, involving her son. I still don't know what's going on. Even if I did, I wouldn't tell you guys because you know, it's not my place to tell. But something happened and she all of a sudden was like, I need, like, I don't even know. I just need time. So I'm working six days straight this week. I am on day five and tomorrow is a double shift. So yeah, kind of tired. Okay. I could eat this whole thing. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mm-hmm. They have other flavors. I will be trying them all. All right. Moving forward, I would like to make this a regular feature on my channel.
because I do really enjoy it, and I have things I want to talk about, but I don't just want to sit there and talk, because I kind of feel awkward, and I feel like it's really good to talk about things over food. Um, so, I want to talk about food. And I would like to, most of the time, <clears throat> have it be something I've made, like I cook for myself. I'm sure occasionally I will be doing some fast food ones, because I really like fast food. I just know if I eat it too much, it's not, I don't feel good and I can't function well if I eat too much of it, but I love fast food. I love burgers, I love tacos, I love it all. And there's some really good restaurants around here that I would like to share, but that will not be the norm every week. What I would like to do is, I love all things vintage, especially the 1940s. Um, I think I finally figured out why because my grandmother was a young woman in the 40s and um, it's like her time she was a child through the Great Depression she was a young woman in the 40s and she was Rosie the Riveter she worked at a tank factory in um, Detroit and in the 50s she was a young housewife so the whole thing like I love the whole era um, but really drawn to specifically the 40s and I have this was my grandmother's cookbook it is in this huge three ring binder and it is a dusty mess because this has been handed down through my family my mom had it for many 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 years after my grandmother passed away and I've had it for quite a while now and what I am thinking of doing so this is the 1945 edition of <laughs> get up here thing weighs a ton and we have one. there we go better homes and gardens cookbook from 1945 so ugh, this one was originally copyrighted I think it's 1941 and this the last copyright on here the sixth printing of the deluxe edition from February 1945 so it's you know like the end of World War II um, but there's a lot of fun information in here and fun recipes in here. So what I'm thinking is for probably the foreseeable future, because there is a lot in here. It's about our homes and gardens cookbook. I mean, it's huge. Um, I want to work my way through the book. I have always wanted to do this. And, but I look at some things and I'm like, oh my kids, nobody will eat that. Like my kids won't eat that. But I really want to work my way through the book. And literally, I'm thinking the first chapter, food chapter, is appetizers and making like three or four a week and sharing it. And, you know, eating it and telling you guys what it tastes like and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know, what do you think? Um, I, can, I can do that. I can Totally do that. Well, but I think it would be really fun to work through this book and share the dishes. So that is my plan. That is my idea. Please, please, please let me know if that's something you would like to see. And I see some of these, even some of the page protectors are falling apart. That's like how well it's used. I have made quite a few things from here and there's check marks and notes from like things that my mom has made or my grandmother has made that um, tasted good and might skip chapters like the canning chapter because <laughs> I don't know how I would do that on the yeah. camera but there's a lot in here we could play with so so let me know what you think um, in the comments down below if you think this is a good idea I do have other recipe books not era recipe books but I have some other recipe books um, I have a couple of celebrity recipe books like um, Gabrielle Hamilton from Prune in New York. Um, I have an Anthony Bourdain cookbook. I have a Jewish cookbook. I have I have some Lebanese cookbooks. I love food. <laughs> I mentioned I love food and I love food from everywhere. I have Indian cookbooks. Um, what else do I have? I have vegan cookbooks, I have the, I have the Nom Yourself cookbook, I have 
a lot of vegan cookbooks actually. So I have a lot I could draw from. So my first thought is to do the World War II cookbook because I love everything vintage. But if you have something else you would like to see or a different, you know, of something, I'll leave I'll leave it in the description box of what I have available. And you know, let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumb up, thumb. And subscribe because I'm going to be doing one of these a week. I think I'm going to call it Tasty Tuesday. If I put them up on Tuesday. Or I may put them up on Friday and call it Feasting Friday. We'll see when it gets up. And that will determine. My plan is every week I will do another video and talk about food. And eat food. And talk about whatever is on my list to talk about for the week. So, yeah. Anyway, I gotta go. I will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful rest of your time and I will see you all.